What if there aren't singularities inside of black holes? What if instead of an infinitely small, infinitely dense point, there's a super dense object with a finite size and density? Pluto patron Marcia Rimai asked us to talk about Planck stars, and they're a wild idea, so let's go for it. Hello again, astronauts. Welcome to Bad Astra, a wacky science channel where we learn about physics with more costume changes than math. On Wednesdays, we release videos ranging from the Bad Answers series, where we answer viewer submitted questions, to interviews with scientists about their research, to science related music videos when we're feeling extra ambitious. Our main content comes once a month in the form of deep dives on scientific topics from the life cycle of stars, to vaccines, to the history of the universe. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, and check out our Patreon for early access to videos and exclusive content. was first proposed by Carlo Rovelli and Francesco Vidotto in 2014 as a solution to the black hole firewall and black hole information paradox. As you've seen in our other videos, you'll know that merging general relativity and quantum mechanics is very difficult. You've probably heard of string theory or M theory, which attempts to unify the two. Another competing noble attempt is loop quantum gravity theory. This theory says that inside of the event horizon of a black hole, there isn't actually a singularity, but instead a super compact star that is created when the energy density of a collapsing star reaches the Planck energy density. In our Even Stars Must Die video, we talk about neutron stars being held up by the pressure of neutrons pushing against each other. If gravity can overcome that final pressure barrier, you get a black hole. But what if there's another pressure barrier? Loop quantum gravity, or LQG theory, assumes that gravity and space-time are quantized, so there are smallest possible units of space and time. Like matter has quarks and light has photons, gravity and space-time have tiniest amounts as well. This means that the mass energy density cannot collapse beyond this limit because it violates Heisenberg's uncertainty principle for space-time itself. In small words, once the matter inside a black hole gets compact enough, it can't go any further and rebounds outwards. Planck stars rebound at a specific energy density, not size, so they wouldn't get nearly as small as the Planck length. This is important because physicists are super worried about preserving all the information in the universe, and the bigger tiny star has enough storage space to save all the information captured by the black hole, avoiding information loss. I'm not even kidding, physicists really care about conservation of information. So this is a fun theory, but if the star bounces right back after hitting a specific energy density, why do we see black holes still anchoring galaxies, merging and producing gravitational waves, and swallowing up science, Tommy? Shouldn't the observed presence of stable black holes evaporating super slowly through Hawking radiation just invalidate this theory on its surface? Now we get to the fun, timey-wimey bit. Remember that gravity warps space and time. Even though the bounce back happens very quickly in the Planck star's reference frame, the warping of space-time slows down the star's time in an outside reference frame to an extreme. Seen from outside the star's Schwarzschild radius, or event horizon, the rebound from a Planck star takes approximately 14 billion years. This would mean that even primordial black holes are only now starting to rebound from an outsider's perspective, since the universe is just under 14 billion years old. However, 
If astronomers could observe emissions from rebounding black holes from the very early universe, that would be really strong evidence for loop quantum gravity theory. String theory also predicts a new interpretation of what's inside a black hole. It's called a fuzzball and also eliminates the singularity within a black hole and accounts for a way to preserve the quantum information that falls into a black hole's event horizon. But that's for another video. Astra out. CC loves you. <laughs>